Do you know who's behind your email? What do they fund? Are they building a culture you want to be a part of? This Advent, break up with big tech and reboot your email with FIDE. Look us up, F-I-D-E-I. And there's a link in the description box below. That's FIDE, how Catholics send email. Cardinal Robert Seurat rarely speaks up about the crisis in the church, but when he does, his words hit with the force of a sledgehammer, made all the more impactful because the cardinal legitimately radiates that sense of peacefulness we associate with people who are far more sanctified than you or I. When he speaks, he should be listened to. And today, I have an important story from Cardinal Seurat where he just destroys one of the more pervasive myths that we tell ourselves to comfort ourselves into thinking that somewhere in the world the church must be in good shape and not and is not experiencing the problems that we in the West are having. So we turn to Africa, and we think that the church in Africa is thriving because they have enough vocations to send reasonably orthodox missionary priests to the U.S. and to Western Europe. If you've ever encountered those priests, then you know quite often, that those priests are among the best and most conservative you'll find in the Novus Ordo Synodal Church today. But the truth is something else. Africa has more vocations than America, sure, but they don't have enough vocations to meet their own needs. And their priests are frankly sent out basically to get resources to send back to their home dioceses, where orthodoxy doesn't really reign at all. Now, in their home dioceses, They have as many bizarre ideas about the liturgy as you'll find in the West, and people openly advocate for all manner of heretical ideas in those countries. The difference between the church in Africa and the church in America and its relationship to this stuff is that they have a different group of bad ideas that they argue for on that continent. And Cardinal Seurat is speaking out against those bad ideas. Now, thankfully, he's doing this, even though he's retired and he could just go walk away into the sunset because it needs to be done. So let's dive into the story today. But before I do that, I want to thank the channel members and the patrons for their continued support of Return to Tradition. Their support helps keep these daily messages and daily live streams coming, so I do thank them for that. For as little as like a dollar a month, they help keep this work alive. And if you want to join them in supporting the work that we do here, you can find options in the description box below, which include links to Patreon, Subscribestar, Buy Me a Coffee, that kind of thing, or you can just hit that Join button. Thanks, and let's get to Colonel Robert Seurat, who is technically retired without a real post in the Roman Curia anymore, despite having had an illustrious career of serving Christ and his church under Benedict XVI. So, headline from La Croix International. African liturgies are too noisy and too African, says Cardinal Seurat. Cardinal Robert Seurat, former head of the Vatican's worship office, addresses African liturgist Congress deplores dancing and lack of silence during enculturated mass. The key here is the concept of the enculturated mass. By the way, Robert Seurat is himself an African cardinal, okay, for those maybe wondering. But this is the next logical step of having a offering a new form of the mass designed by committee to be offered in the local language anywhere in the world. The next logical step after that is to incorporate local cultural elements into the mass, which in many cases in various places in the world Where this is done often includes elements of the pre-Christian religions being present in the Mass, and what can only be called syncretism, which has been condemned by the Church. Now, it's worth noting that Africa was brought to the faith by many centuries of the work of missionary priests who offered what we today would call the traditional Latin Mass. Despite being offered in a language the locals had no hope of understanding, for the most part, the work of those missionaries converted many countless souls to Christ, and that work continued until Vatican II. After, the approach changed and the effect hasn't been that good. But let's see what Cardinal Seurat's reasoning behind his statement is. Quote, Cardinal Robert Seurat, the Guinean who once headed the dicastery for divine worship and the discipline of the sacraments, at the Vatican has again called for a return to a more traditional form of Catholic liturgy that is marked by greater silence. In a homily at a Eucharistic celebration in Dakar, which is in Senegal, on Monday to open the first ever Congress of African liturgists, the 78-year-old African cardinal severely criticized what he saw as the destruction of the Mass in the West. We are witnessing today, especially in the West, a dismantling of the 
values of faith and piety, and a destruction of the forms of the Mass, he lamented, from the pulpits in Our Lady of Victory's Cathedral in the Senegalese capital. We're working to sprinkle African and Asian elements into the liturgy, thereby distorting the Paschal mystery we celebrate. We place so much emphasis on these cultural elements that our celebrations sometimes last six hours, said Cardinal Seurat, who was the who was the DDWDS prefect from 2014 to 2021. Our liturgies are often too banal and too noisy, too African and less Christian, added the cardinal, who published a book in 2017 called The Power of Silence, end quote. And what he's saying could be said about any offering of the new mass anywhere in the Western world. Honestly, it could be you could say in some places it's too American and not Catholic enough. There's a distinct and troubling lack of sacred silence in the mass. Adding in elements of the secular culture anywhere in the world is a terrible idea, but it's a terrible idea that makes sense if you understand the thinking behind the new church and its new religion. Remember, we are inundated constantly with talk of dialogue and accompaniment, and listening and participation and inclusion of the laity. The emphasis on participation is especially troubling because traditionally, the laity have been encouraged to quietly pray along with the priest who is offering the Mass, uniting their private prayers to his, either by following his prayers from the Mass book in the pews or by offering a rosary silently in union with his work at the altar. This is an ancient practice in the church, but to our modern sensibilities, it does not apparently count as participation, which now comes to mean very vocal, noisy offering of the Mass. And it is this noise that, when combined with the noise of the world that is constantly around us, right worship becomes very difficult, if not impossible. Cardinal Seurat, writing in his book on sacred silence, reflects on this. In the promotional period for that book, when it first came out, the Cardinal gave a great many interviews. One that he gave with the National Catholic Register on this subject of silence at Mass gives us this insight. He is asked about Eucharistic silence as the remedy for the noise of the world and the interior noise that we have in our hearts and minds at all times, pretty much. That noise won't be remedied by making the Mass noisier and more boisterous. To hear the voice of the Lord, we must cultivate peace and silence in our hearts and in our lives. Quote, I'm struck always by the homily of Bishop Melito of Sardis and the office of readings on Easter Saturday as the Church Universal awaits the great vigil of Easter. Something strange is happening. There's a great silence on earth today, a great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh, and he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh, and hell trembles with fear. It is imperative for us to rediscover the Easter we celebrate in each of our Eucharists. We must rediscover the urgency and importance of celebrating the Eucharist in silence, the silence of Easter. Paschal vision does not consist in a rapture of the Spirit. It is the silent discovery of God. If only the Mass could be, each morning, what it was on Golgotha and on Easter morning. Remember that the resurrection of Christ itself on Easter morning was seen by no one and was made in silence. The sound of Christ's resurrection is not one of trumpet blasts and cymbal crashes, but like the introit chant of Easter morning, is a tranquil, mystical ascent from death to life. Easter marks the triumph of life over death, the victory of Christ's silence over the great roar of hatred and falsehood. End quote. Cardinal Seurat has been waging his own private war against enculturated and noisy liturgies for many years. It's in perhaps one of the most important works being undertaken in the church today, and it's being done well away from any ears. And it's one of the most important because you will find no account of any saint in history who achieved sanctity by continuously bathing themselves in noise. It's in those silent moments of prayer that we hear the voice of God, even at Mass. Many prelates know this, and during the Mass will make sure to offer a moment of silent prayer after the reception of communion. And I'm talking here about in the Novus Ordo, not the traditional Mass, which has numerous points of silent prayer. Many good priests who offer the new Mass understand that silence in the Mass is essential to living the life of faith, and no place in the church that offers the Mass with extra noise and extra bells and whistles in the name of enculturation and dialogue and mercy and accompaniment and making people feel welcome and seen is 
going to accomplish that. In fact, in the long run, such practices may result in fewer vocations, fewer baptisms, declining mass attendance, and the loss of souls. And why is that? Because every heart hungers to hear the voice of God, and in the Mass, being inundated with noise will make it impossible to hear His voice, even at Mass. That's the point that the Cardinal is making. He just makes it much more eloquently than I am capable of. What do you think of this? Do you think Cardinal Seurat is right, or do you think he should lighten up and just go with the flow and let there be enculturated Masses that, while it's strictly speaking being a Latin Rite Mass, looks nothing like the Latin Rite Masses of any place else in the world? Do you think he's right about noise, both in our lives and in our worship? Let me know what you think about all that in the comments, please. And hit like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps too. And once again, thanks to the patrons and channel members for their support of the work here. It is greatly appreciated. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.